All right, thanks for coming back. Today we're going to create an AI character from the sandbox character. So right click the sandbox character, create child blueprint class and rename that AI. And this is going to use the same blueprint that the sandbox character uses. And the reason I'm creating a child class is because the sandbox animation blueprint uses a bunch of variables from this from the sandbox character so it's just easier to do it um, to show you how to get the uh, animation replied. So we want to search for rotation in the character movement. And we want to click allow physics rotation under the root motion. And then we're going to go to our event graph and from the event tick we want to find that and we want to get actor location the AI actor's location and then we want to get the player character. For this tutorial I'm just going to show the AI character follow the player so that's what I'm going to set up here. So we want to get the player character's actor location. Alright and then from the actor get actor location we want to drag that off and we want to get unit direction vector and from the AI's location to the player's location, we want to an add a movement endpoint. So the AI is going to run in the direction of the player. Compile and save. And, and then one last thing, we want to search for orient, orient rotation to movement. If you don't do this, he'll walk backwards t towards you. Which if you want that, you don't have to uncheck that. So go ahead and drag the AI character into the map and press play and now he's running towards you. Alright so you can see that he's using the animation blueprint and he can't jump yet so let's go ahead and give him the ability to jump. I'll, we'll do that real quick just to show you you know how you can add events to utilize the blueprint that it's you know linked up to. So First off, in the sandbox character, your character, we make sure these are the final settings. In the sandbox player character, make sure update movement, update rotation, and update camera are connected. In the sandbox AI character, right click, search for get wants to strafe, and look on the details in the default value, make that false, and compile that and save, and then you can delete that wants to strafe node away, and your default value will be checked to not strafing. That way it will turn around and chase you rather than walk backwards towards you and everything. So those, that's the way I have them both set up so that you can move around like this and that you can use your middle mouse button to turn around and decide not to strafe. You know. So, so those are the final settings for that. Now, let's go ahead and add a jump function. So to do that, what we're going to do is go into the setup input function and at the end of the mapping for the controller, go ahead and search for get actor of class and get pull create that node and pull them together. And then in the class, we're going to use the sandbox AI character that we just created. And then we're going to promote that to a variable and delete that and then drag out the variable that it just created and then set that to the actor class and then connect those and rename that whatever you'd like back in the event graph still in the player character we want to create a custom event for the jump and we want to connect that to everything that our jump uses like when we when we jump we want the computer to do all the same things. We want to try a traversal action. We want to see if it's moving on the ground and all that good stuff. So now let's create a dirty input for the one key on your keyboard. Drag out the AI sandbox variable we just created that references the AI bot and then access the jump custom event we just created and connect it to the one input. And then that way, anytime we hit one, the AI character will jump, you know? 
And that's just a way to show you, you know, you, you can create a custom event that will trigger jumping for the AI. You know, and it's going to try to traverse. So, if we hit one, it's going to jump and then it will traverse. So, you would want to create a system where it would see if it has something in front of it and then it might try to jump and traverse it, you know. So, thanks for stopping by.